Now, before we get into today's bit of batshit insanity, I, uh, I feel like I should change the poster in the background. I don't even know if Christmas is mentioned in Winter's Tale. I gotta have some other poster laying around. Oh, it's this poster from, uh, uh, from Eric Freeman. Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, Eric Freeman? Hang on. Cinema hack, eat shit, asshole. You're the shit stain in the panties of life. Fuck off, the garbage man. I just got insulted by Ricky Caldwell. I am gonna make sweet, passionate love to this poster. The magic Christmas tree is a bit of what the fuck 1960s that feels like the fever dream caused by whatever drug Santa Claus slipped the ice cream bunny. It's about little Mark who receives a magic ring from a witch that brings forth, you guessed it, a magic Christmas tree. The poster, on the other hand, does not fill me with confidence that this movie was made by cinematic professionals. First off, it looks to me like it's about Santa Claus fucking the magic Christmas tree. And I highly doubt this theatrically released film was live, never before on the screen? Mm, yeah, that is usually the case when a movie's a new release. I sure hope Bluto is at least good in this film. Okay, let's see how magical this Christmas tree film is. My god. Bob Revere was right. Not only did they change it from Christmas pictures to holiday pictures, but there was absolutely no Christmas music playing. <laughs> I still don't care. This movie has no business being about Christmas when they haven't even taken their Halloween decorations down. But on the plus side, they got rid of that whole segregated water fountains thing. Even if the black kid's voice seems like it was recorded very, very far away from the other actors. Boy, am I hungry. Me too. I thought that old bell was never going to ring. Where was that set? The benches are all full. Well, I wonder what kind of sandwich I have today. Probably meatloaf. How do you know? Yeah, look, he's on screen with the rest of the kids. What more do you want? They even got to bring their own lunch. Guess what mine is, fellas? Baloney! Oh, how'd you guys know? Because they've been practicing saying the word baloney simultaneously for months. These kids are method actors. Seriously, they won't stop talking about their food. Well, every day for a year now, you've had a bologna sandwich in your lunch. That's how we know. Mine's cheese. I'll trade you my bologna for your cheese. Oh, I thought so. Meatloaf. Here, Dave, I'll trade you. Oh, boy, Jimmy. Wait a minute. What? Well, a meatloaf sandwich is worth more than a bologna sandwich. You gotta throw in the banana, too. This is the longest Lipton's Cup of Soup commercial I've ever seen. We get it. Your lunches are lame. And why does this keep feeling more like a Halloween film? What are you guys going to do tonight? I'm going to take my sister to a Halloween party. That's a heck of a way to spend Halloween. Parties, girls. Um, partying and girls is the only way to celebrate Halloween. That and a lot of vodka cranberries. This movie has such a combination of Halloween and Christmas, I can't believe Hot Topic doesn't sell t-shirts of it. These kids have their priorities, though, which is to go check out the haunted house that's owned by a witch. Oh, she's no witch. Well, she looks like a witch. Always dressed in black, and with that long, scraggly hair, and a big nose, and all hunched over, like... Like in storybook. Oh yeah? If she's a witch, why did you just talk without your lips moving? You're all little demons. And just where is this house? We can take the long way home. What long way? Out Elm Street. Yeah, great. It's that Freddy Krueger prequel where he just goes around molesting a bunch of children. Enough talk about baloney. Let's get a good look at this witch. Lucifer! Lucifer! Are you up there in that tree? Lucifer! 
Answer me! I don't know what these kids are afraid of. That lady can't even find her cat. After getting shooed away from Boo Radley's, they make it to the witch's house. Tiffa! I warn you, huh? Her lips aren't sinking either. This whole town is full of witches! They've even convinced us that this is a Christmas movie. And never forget that Mark is their stern leader. What now? I think I got a rock on my shoe, too. Well, I don't, so come on! Fuck your feet! If Mark's feet are fine, then so are yours, goddammit! The other two are too scared to go in the house, especially the black kid. He knows he'd be the first one to be killed. The Buttercream Gang was a lot different in the 60s. Back then, it was them who knocked over the Widow Jenkins. Just remember, Timmy, Lassie isn't here to protect you this time. Gotcha, boy! <laughs> oh, sweetie, quit pinching my it's arm! Still, I'm not going to hurt you. Well, time to get molesting! I wasn't gonna do anything! If I let you go, will you promise not to run away? Now, promise. Okay, I promise. Just quit pinching my arm! Eh, Miss Gulch liked to take dogs away from young girls. This witch likes touching the neighborhood children. Unless they can get her cat down from the tree. Eh, must be the days when you couldn't just lure a cat in with a can of tuna like this. <coughs> He's on a no tuna diet now, apparently. Though it is 1964, so the black cat is lucky they didn't spray him away with a fire hose. Well, that might be better than depending on Mark. I sure hope this is nothing like Wizard of Oz. My god, it's in color now. Clearly a rip-off of that alternate version of Rocky Horror Picture Show. And she is a witch! You are a witch! A real witch! Yes, you found out my secret. Then I work part-time at a spirit Halloween. I'm not entirely convinced this movie is as well made as The Wizard of Oz. Thanks, camera angle. Now I know the house has a roof. I didn't think it was possible, but changing this to color appears to make the kid more white. The color seems to be confusing him. The kid actor can't decide on which direction he should be facing. And is it just me, or is she much hotter as a witch? And like every crazy old lady, she gives the kid a magic ring. Did I say magic? I mean her granddaughter made that in art class because she got ripped off on a gumball machine. The hell is the deal with this ring, anyway? It will grant you three wishes. I have a wish. Wait until Halloween is over to start doing Christmas things. Also, don't forget the magic words. What magic words? Rimbum, Karenum, Oh. What the hell? Those words aren't magic. My god, this erection wasn't here before. It doesn't take too long for this to get more awkward. If you think ugly, you see ugly. If you think beautiful, you see beautiful things. Do you think beautiful things about your mother? Gee, yes. She's real pretty. Now I know our hero jacks off to his mom. I'm caring less and less about this story. And someone just put their cigarette out on the film. Are we going to get to Christmas or what? Oh good, someone knocked their calendar off their desk. Sure hope they get it to the right date. Now we get to see what Mark's home life is like. I get the wishbone. Well, you'll take what I give you. Dad! Normally, Mark is forced to eat cigarette butts and a can of chew. This meal is a step up for Mark. Oh, is he into the sports? I can't tell if he's into the sports. He likes both the Dodgers and the Yankees. We don't want to piss off both coasts. But now is the perfect time for Mark to ask Santa if he'll marry him. And if you think this movie won't get weirder... Come on, Ichabod, wake up! Everybody's asleep now! 
Hey, show some respect to Ichabod the Turtle. After all, he has his own IMDB page, where apparently he's so versatile that he once played the voice of a cat. Now, don't worry, Lloyd. You still have more credits on your IMDB page. No, seriously, he does. We as a society were right to create the Ninja Turtles toys. It prevented little kids from collecting turtles like a serial killer collects mannequins. Meanwhile, in Amityville, he goes outside to grow the magic tree, but instead gets an evil lamp, an evil clock, and an evil dollhouse. He's lucky he doesn't find his dad's dead hookers. I sure hope he remembers the magic words. Rimbum, carry noon, ho! Oh, like that's really gonna grow a magic tree. God damn it! Let's see how quickly this tree grows. <laughs> convincing. Almost as convincing as mom and dad's fiery passion. More coffee, dear? More coffee, dear? Mm -hmm. That's strange. There's nothing in the paper about it. I asked if you wanted more coffee. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, honey. I forget that sometimes your mouth can make words. Maybe they'll talk about something exciting, like the weather. There's nothing in the weather report about a thunderstorm. Matter of fact, it says nothing but clear weather. Well, I didn't hear any thunder. Mom hasn't felt thunder like this since their wedding night. Anymore, it's just a lot of snoring and crying. And Dad's more obsessed with other things, like yard work. Well, come on, Dad. Treat it like your malfunctioning penis. Pour a bottle of scotch in it. Christ, is the mower not working? I haven't gotten the point yet. Stop tempting me to make another malfunctioning penis joke. This movie is padding itself out to an hour by showing the frustrations of a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Thank fucking Christ! Now do we get to watch something exciting? You know, like him actually mowing? <laughs> I take back what I said last week. There is a war on Christmas. This movie is making me never want to celebrate anything ever again. The most exciting thing about this movie is watching Ichabod the Turtle eat. Mom is now reminded just how clumsy Dad is at oral sex. He once sprained his ankle when accidentally licking her kneecap. For God's sake, run into something! <laughs> I'll call you back, Betty. What the fuck? Did he just hit a turtle or a box of dynamite? Uh, I guess the tree blew him up. I was mowing the lawn when I ran into this tree. This tree? My, such a beautiful tree. Never mind that. Where did it come from? Just because the tree wasn't there the night before is no excuse for you to not see a giant tree in front of your face. But the real issue here is that Mom dared to venture outside the kitchen. I don't think you should cut it down. Helen, just go back into the house and do whatever it was and leave me alone. You know, all of that making meatloaf and bologna sandwiches sorcery. And fuck your damn mower. Is the turtle okay? Yahoo! Good, the turtle is fine, but can someone get rid of the sound effects box from going bananas? Unfortunately, he can't cut the tree down because it's made with the finest American steel. Hopefully we get to see this for an extended period of time. <laughs> Why 
are you sweating? Nothing is happening. Just give up already. Okay, little tree. Looks like you're one of the family. Well, those are words he's never said to Mark's black friend. Oh, good. Just what this movie needs. A weird Christmas parade. I'm sure he could do a hundred tricks. He's doing one now. Yes, he's kneeling on one leg. That's very difficult for a horse. Cut that shit out! I will never have fun in Balloon Land. But Magic Christmas Trees aren't the movie's only twist. Hi, I'm finished dressing, dear. The stores will be crowded tonight and we haven't much time. I'm almost finished, Mother. What the hell? Mark is a girl now? Was that his first wish? Oh, he has a sister. Thanks for telling me, movie. And Dad still seems like a bit of a grump. Do you mean to say that you haven't bought the Christmas tree yet, Henry? You haven't seen one around, have you? That beer's not gonna open itself, honey. Ha <laughs> 60s marriage! The family leaves Mark home alone for the night. Except this is 1964, so the wet bandits are just gonna break in and shoot him. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Have fun at the Sterling Cooper Draper Price Party, and don't do too much raping. I'll just be here with that tree that does nothing. Gee, how do I know if it's full grown? Oh, I'm full grown, all right. Trees can't talk. Well, don't be silly. If trees can't talk, then how can I answer you? Because I don't think that candy cane I snorted was a real candy cane. What the fuck? The tree can talk? But you look kind of scrawny. Well, I've been through a lot lately, and, uh, well, enough of this. Now let's get down to business. And the tree has no time for your body shaming. Why does this movie keep getting weirder? It's gone! The magic Christmas tree! It's gone! The end of that scene just died prematurely. Looks like my wishes are coming true. This tree isn't so much magical as it is grumpy. How'd you get in here? Come, come, boy, don't ask such silly questions. Turn the ring again and say the magic words. This tree wishes he were in the giving tree. He just seems like he wants to be chopped up. And stop looking up the tree's skirt. Christ, tree, crack a joke, why don't you? Boy, you're really powerful, aren't you? I don't wish to brag. <laughs> I get it, because he grants wishes. Ugh. Go back to being grumpy. Or at least give this kid his wish. Is that your wish? An hour of power? An hour of power. An hour of power. Hey, that's not bad. An hour of power. I'm sorry, did he just wish for an hour of white power? Why are we letting this kid do magic things? Good, Mark can now make flowers disappear. He wants to go outside, but can't because it's too dark out. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? You know, light switches are a thing, you fucking idiot. Good, he's been granted the gift of a day for night shot. Now he can leave. At least someone is excited, because it sure isn't the tree. Hmm. Hmm. Gee. All that magic has made me kind of tired. Oh, I think I'll take a little... <laughs> Why does the magic Christmas tree need a fucking Xanax? And no one wonders why it's suddenly bright outside. Hopefully Mark uses his powers for good. <laughs> he just got that guy fired! Did he speed up time? Why are so many people out and about? Great, now he's using his powers to make the cops chase after the black guy who was chasing after a runaway truck. I see this ending well in 1964. He also causes a random pie fight on the sidewalk and a runaway fire engine. <laughs> what if there's a real fire that's probably caused by Mark? Won't someone call the cops? Oh, right, the cop car is a runaway too. 
So I gotta ask, is it too early to call Mark a terrorist? Well, he did one thing right. He caused the end of that scene. So either time has been put back, or his parents have been gone for 24 hours, and they found zero Christmas trees. There's only one thing left to do. Must. Kill. Mark. Considering that tree caused more damage to this town than Carrie White, Dad is right to chop that fucker down. But unfortunately, he still can't find his wife's G-spot. No matter, Mark proves to be the only man of the house and shows Dad their new tree. Well, sure I like it. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. Dad's not used to there being such a long, hard piece of wood in the house. Not only do they have a tree, but Mark finally has a real friend. Mr. Tree, are you awake? What? Who's there? Oh, it's you. Well, I suppose you've come back to ask for your second wish. This tree has more contempt for the main character than I do. Thankfully, Mark gets a second wish, because, you know, it looks like he lives in so much poverty. I want Santa Claus for my very own this Christmas. Ah, the season of kidnapping. Isn't that a bit selfish? Well, I mean, after all, Christmas is for sharing, isn't it? I don't care. That's my wish and that's what I want. All to myself. Ugh, how does Veruca Salt's brother manage to be more selfish than Veruca Salt? Here you go, kid. It's a pervy Santa from the mall. Hopefully that'll do. Never mind Home Alone. I'm pretty sure I'm watching a prequel to The Good Son. Can you tell me what is going on here? I'm afraid that you're our prisoner for tonight, Mr. Claus. I can't move! What have you done to me? Relax, Santa. I'm your number one fan. Ebenezer Scrooge has more compassion than this kid. The poor children. The poor, poor children. They'll all wake up in the morning and find no presents. Eh, the poor kids are used to it. Now Santa is stuck talking to the magic Christmas tree for all of eternity. As for Mark, what, what is he doing? Looking for homeless people to shoot? God, I hope this all ends with the kid getting his eyes shot out. Hey kid, I pissed in that water. You're drinking my piss. <laughs> uh, uh, what the actual fuck? Who are you? You know me, boy. You know me well. Uh, it's the petter ass who runs the bicycle shop. This is a very special episode of the Magic Christmas Tree. Run, Mark, run! You're my little boy now. No, I'm not your little boy. You are my little boy. Help, oh, put me down, put me down. Well, if the threat of appearing on a milk carton isn't enough to scare the kid straight, I'm sure this giant's gonna murder him anyway. I promise never to be greedy again. Not so fast. I must be sure that you mean what you say. I have something to show you. What's with this movie whipping out its dick to kids? Actually, he shows Mark how his wish has affected the entire world. The nation stands aghast today from coast to coast as speculation on the mysterious disappearance of Santa Claus on Christmas Eve leaps from state capital to state capital. At the United Nations, reports were being received from all over the world on the progress of the search for the missing Santa. Hmm, so that's how the Vietnam War got started. The police are even called in, and the Air Force. That's much easier than parents just buying kids presents themselves. These poor kids, it must suck still having everything. Mark instantly regrets his wish, and is let go by giant Uncle Touchy. Well, I lost him, but I'll find another greedy child to be my slave. Maybe you. I'm sorry, I'm too old for you. And that's the same voice as the tree. Why is the magic Christmas tree also a giant who collects child slaves? So he wishes for Santa to forgive him, and for Santa to give presents to all the kids. He doesn't take back the wish that put all these people out of work, though, but uh, whatever. 
<laughs> At least he'll have his own Stretch Armstrong toy. Unfortunately, though, all he gets in this scene is a bad jump cut. I sure hope this ends with an emotional goodbye to the tree. Goodbye, magic Christmas tree. That tree didn't even like you. Why are you crying? Oh, right. It was all a dream. I almost forgot. This is such a rip-off of the Emilio Estevez movie Wisdom. Don't worry. Things are still weird in the real world, too. I was thinking of a plate of cookies and a glass of cold milk. I would like some cookies and milk. I'll get them for you right away. It doesn't matter what reality Mark is in, someone is going to try to poison and molest him. And the last one crosses the finish line. It can't be. It was all a dream. Hi, lad. It's me. And always remember... That's not the same voice as before. I need consistency in my magic Christmas trees. Wanna know the real twist of this movie? It's directed by someone named Dick Parrish. Can we not have movies made by parishioners who are directing with their dicks? For Christ's sake, I need to see this movie's poster again. Magic and fun for everyone? Oh <laughs> yeah, if you like yard work. Dazzles your eyes, fills you with fun. I don't know what that giant was gonna fill that kid with, but it most certainly was not fun. See, the magic ring! Fantastic! Unbelievable! What the hell, is Trump selling me this movie? See, the evil witch, the crazy police, and fire engine chase! Oh uh, yeah, this truly is the a view to a kill of Christmas movies. Notice how it doesn't say, See, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Probably because Rudolph isn't in the fucking movie! So why is it on the goddamn poster other than to trick people? Ugh, if that's the poster, then what the hell is the trailer like? You know that old Finch place? You mean the one that everybody says is haunted? That's the place! Eh, I guess that's alright. Uh, no adults admitted without children? What the fuck? A movie theater should not have the same sign on its door as Jared Fogel's house! This movie makes me miss the wholesomeness and subtlety of Miss Velma's Christmas. And that movie had a crazy woman firing live ammunition on a stage. Well, thank God next week we have something more normal. You know, an actual horror film. <laughs> if you're going to cut it down, Henry, you should use the axe, not the power mower. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs>